This video was made with support from my patrons, whose names are on screen now. If you want to, you can join them today and even get access to exclusive content. The link to my Patreon is in the description, so check it out if you're interested. Anyway, on with the show. Gran Turismo has featured literally thousands of cars over the course of its 26 years and counting. Whether they be the latest and greatest performance cars, legendary models that we could only ever dream of owning in real life, or just your everyday Econo boxes. Almost every facet of motoring history has been represented in these games. But not only has it covered the most well-known and important cars throughout time, but plenty of obscure ones also. There are countless cars which many of us are only aware of because of these games, and a few of those have even risen to an almost mythical status in huge part thanks to how they appeared in these games. Now that's all wonderful, but when it comes to racing games like Gran Turismo, it's not just about the cars that have been included, there's always a lot of discussion about the cars that don't quite make the cuts. These can come in many forms. A lot of the time it's just people wishing that certain models were featured, but sometimes there is actual proof to suggest that some of these cars were planned to be in the game at some point. And in the most extreme examples, there is even physical evidence of them being in the game. Some of them can even still be found lurking in the code to this very day. So, what I've done is trawl through the archives to bring you all the most interesting cars that have been cut out from various Gran Turismo games. What we'll do is go by game, starting off with the least interesting, but still pretty interesting, and then working our way up to the kind of bizarre and fascinating. There's a lot to get through, so let's not waste any more time. So, I did say that we were going to start off with the least interesting, but rather contradictory to that, our first cut car is actually one of the more obscure and forgotten cases. Gran Turismo Sport is the seventh mainline title in the series, and despite not having a huge amount of content when it released, still ended up with some cars being cut out. The most well-known example is with the Lotus brand, and two of its cars which were seen in the game pre-release, the 2009 Evora and 2011 Elise. But we're not talking about that today. I've already covered the Lotus vs Gran Turismo situation extensively in a previous video, so check out the card in the top right corner if you're interested in that. But within the database of GT Sport, there exists a few name-only entries of cars that weren't used in the game. One of these is for the Nissan GTR Pure Edition 2015. In the final game, the only GTR road car at launch was the then new 2017 Premium Edition. A similar thing is also true with the Peugeot 208, wherein the standard GTI model was slated to be in the game, and its name can still be found within the files, but in the final game, it's replaced entirely with the Peugeot Sport 208. In both cases, there are no leftover assets for the previous model in the final game. However, in regards to the GTR, some pre-release screenshots of the game, which were seen at a live event in London in May 2016, seem to depict an earlier version of the GTR before it received the 2017 facelift. It's not known for certain whether this is the Pure Edition, or just the 2012 Black Edition, which was already included in GT6. But regardless, it's a version of the GTR which was not featured in the final game. You can now probably see why I put this first, since it's just another GTR. Back in the PS3 days, when people would joke about the duplicate cars, the GTR was often one of the most egregious examples, along with the Honda Civic and Mazda Roadster slash MX-5 slash Miata. So, their decision here to not include another GTR might have actually been somewhat refreshing although they would later add the 2017 GTR Nismo in an update. But what's interesting to consider is that since GT Sport, the pre-2017 shape GTR still hasn't returned to the series, and at this point, it might never. Considering that the R35 GTR has been included in this series from before the real car even launched, that is kind of strange to think about. Not that anyone else really remembers. 
So, in many of the situations in this video, the car, or cars in question, are initially designed for the game, and then made inaccessible or removed entirely before the game comes out. Our second example is a bit different, however. When Gran Turismo 6 released in 2013, one of the new initiatives it brought was the Vision Gran Turismo program. The basic idea was that Gran Turismo would collaborate directly with manufacturers to design concept cars, which would then be brought to the game, as a way of celebrating the 15th anniversary of the series. Over the course of GT6, 16 manufacturers would take part in the program and bring new models to the game. However, in September 2015, a 17th brand would unveil their new Vision GT car, Hyundai. Now, this was only a few months after the previous Vision GT, the SRT Tomahawk, was included. However, it would take well over two years before players could finally get their hands on the Hyundai N 2025. GT Sport was unveiled in October 2015, and only with its release could people finally access the Hyundai. This was despite the fact that the trailer and various screenshots clearly showed the car in the GT6 game engine. One of the circuits it appeared at, Côte d'Azur, wasn't even included in GT Sport. So, what's the deal? Well, as it turned out, the car was actually included in the 1.21 update of GT6 that released at the end of September, bringing the long-awaited course maker feature. But, under normal circumstances, the car wouldn't be accessible. The only exception was the 2015 Frankfurt Motor Show, in which a special build of GT6 made the car drivable. But outside of this one event, nothing. The car was included, but also not really included, seemingly because they wanted to save it for GT Sport instead. It was quite a bizarre situation. Can you even consider this a cut car? I mean, technically, it was never actually cut, merely added in an unplayable state. I mean, can you retroactively cut a car from a game when it was never intended to be playable in the first place? But what's really interesting is that the Hyundai was not the only car to be included in this way in GT6. The Toyota SFR was another concept car, albeit not a Vision GT, unveiled in October 2015. The real car was unfortunately never put into production and just disappeared entirely, but it still lives on in Gran Turismo. Once again, the car debuted in GT Sports, but it was first seen on GT6 in a special build for the Tokyo Motor Show. And, as you can guess, this was the only place where the car was playable. Similarly to the Hyundai, it was quietly sneaked in to the 1.22 update of GT6. This to me is even more interesting, because the car had no real affiliation to Gran Turismo, so I don't really see why there would be any need to hold it back by two years for the next game. It's also worth mentioning that an updated version of the Nissan Vision GT car was secretly added in the same 1.22 update. The car was pretty much identical to the one already in the game, but included a few new paint options, like this one seen in the trailer called Fire Knight. Not long after the Hyundai Vision GT was shown off, so was the Bugatti Vision GT. Once again, it fell in this awkward period where they had stopped adding cars to GT6, but GT Sport hadn't yet been revealed. Although parts of the trailer for it do look like it's in the GT6 game engine, this car has not been found hidden in GT6, or was made playable in any special builds of the game. As far as anyone can tell, GT Sport was its true original debut. So, that's just a bit of weirdness courtesy of Vision Gran Turismo. I mean, hey, we can get annoyed that they would pull something like this, but if there was any game to do it, GT6 was probably the best one. The game did have 1,279 cars, so losing a couple here, in the grand scheme of things, isn't the worst thing ever. The run-up to the release of Gran Turismo 5 was a time that many of us now look back on fondly. Whilst there was frustration, as the game was delayed on multiple occasions, I don't recall there ever being as much anticipation and, dare I say it, hype, 
around the series as there was when GT5 was being teased. All we could really do at that time was play GT5 Prologue and watch the trailers over and over again. But one of these trailers in particular showed something quite interesting. It was E3 in 2009, and a trailer showing the full Gran Turismo 5 was shown publicly for the first time. As expected, this trailer debuted quite a few things, like new cars and tracks, including the NASCAR series for the first time. Officially. The three NASCAR stock cars from Ford, Chevrolet, and Toyota would eventually make their way into the final game. But the ones in the final game were a little bit different to the ones seen in the trailer. You see, in 2007, the real-life NASCAR series debuted a new generation of car, known as the Car of Tomorrow, with one of the aims of it being to be safer than the cars which came before. One of its most striking features was a large detached rear wing, which hadn't been seen on a stock car of any kind since the 1970s. But despite being generally safer in the event of an accident, it had one fatal flaw. The rear wing seemed to cause cars to flip over far easier in the event that they were turned at high speed. After several high-profile accidents, it was decided in early 2010 that the sports car-style wings would be scrapped, and the traditional single-piece spoilers used instead. And these cars with the replacement wings were the ones that would eventually appear in GT5. The game being delayed to late 2010 allowed them time to remodel these cars in line with the real world changes. So the cars seen in the 2009 E3 trailer, 2009 cars with a mixture of 2008 and 2009 liveries were thrown out entirely and never seen again. There isn't any trace of them in the final release of GT5. However, Gran Turismo on the PSP, which was being developed alongside GT5, does contain text data for four generic NASCAR models. These are labelled as NASCAR Demo Type A, Type B, Type C, and Type D respectively. Although it can't be confirmed, it's highly suspected that these leftovers refer to some of the 2009 cars seen in the trailer. The cars were seen one more time in a trailer from February 2010, teasing specifically the NASCAR series in the game, before they were modified in real life, and then later in GT5. Even as someone who knew virtually nothing about NASCAR back then, I always thought that the large rear wings looked quite strange. They just seemed kind of tacked on. And I'm clearly not the only person who thought this, as it was a common complaint that this style of wing didn't really fit the type of car. It made them look more like GT cars than stock cars. Beyond the safety concerns, this was another reason why they were ditched. So, these cars will always be an interesting footnote in the history of NASCAR. And thanks to these trailers, and GT5's numerous delays, an interesting footnote in the history of Gran Turismo as well. A car can be cut from a game for various reasons, but sometimes the reason why it's been cut can be a lot harder to decipher than others. I think our next example really fits that bill. Gran Turismo Concept was a game that was released in Asia and Europe, based on Gran Turismo 3. The game focused on primarily new models and concept cars from around that time, but a few other cars were included as well, mostly driven by the AI. One of the things GT Concept is known for is having a huge amount of unused cars. These are mostly cars carried over from GT3 that were simply just left in, but in a few cases, these include all new cars that weren't used in the game. With most, they did eventually appear in GT4, but a handful were never seen again. One such example is this, the Mini Cooper S rally car. Based on the 2002 Mini Cooper S, this car has been modified to strongly resemble a 1960s rally car, including side numbers, rally spotlights, roof rack with two spare wheels, and a Rally Monte Carlo rally plate. If it looks familiar to you, that's most likely because it appears to be an homage to the Rover Mini Cooper rally car, which featured in Gran Turismo 2. 
The basic Mini Cooper S that it was based on was one of those cars which went unused in GT Concept, but later appeared in GT4. Yet this modified version never returned. To be honest, it is quite basic for a rally car, so I'm not really sure what purpose it would have served, but it still would have been cool to have nonetheless. But what if I told you this wasn't the only modified Mini Cooper to be cut from one of these games? If we fast forward to GT5, some early pre-release screenshots showed a Mini Cooper S, this time based on the 2005 model with unique decals and a rear wing going up against some lower end race cars, rally cars and tuned cars at Tokyo Route 246. Internally, this car was known as the Mini Cooper S tuned car, much like the tuned cars that featured in GT5 Prologue and GT HD. The tuned cars from those games were either scrapped or turned into racing modifications in GT5, so it's unknown what the fate of this Mini would have been if it had made it into the final game. But we're not done with GT Concept, because there is one more cut car that I'd like to mention. This car, in and of itself, isn't the most interesting, but I find its emission to be maybe the strangest of any of the cars in this video. The car in question is the Peugeot 406 Coupe. The 406 had been in Gran Turismo 2, but didn't feature in GT3. GT Concept should have marked its return, but it was left unused, so GT4 was the game where it reappeared. But what's so strange about this car in particular is that the 406 which featured in GT2 and then came back from GT4 onwards was the 1998 model of the car, whereas the one hidden in GT Concept was the 2001 model year. In truth, the differences between the two are very minor, just a different wheel design and slightly revised front bumper. But the decision to model the 2001 version of the car, not use it in GT Concept, and then modify it to look like the 1998 spec, I find very strange. Again, this was GT4. The game had like 20 versions of every Japanese car by default, so why not just include both model years if they really wanted to? Well, they may not be the most interesting cars on this list, but certainly the ones that make me the most confused as to why they never appeared in their respective game, or were used in any other games for that matter. Given the somewhat rushed development of Gran Turismo 2, it should come as no surprise that the game is littered with cut cars behind the scenes. So, let's talk about the most interesting ones. The Mitsubishi Evo 5 rally car would feature in the final game, but there was an alternate version with a different livery which didn't make the cut. The car in the final game is based on Tommy Mackinnon's 1998 WRC winning car. However, the cut car is also based on his 1998 car. For Rally Australia, and only Rally Australia, he raced with this special design, with primary sponsorship from Winfield. Of course, due to the tobacco sponsorship, this would be censored on the in-game car, and it's unknown whether this was the primary reason for the car being cut. But what's most interesting about this car is that series producer Kazunori Yamauchi actually owns it himself. Sort of. Around the time of GT2's development, he bought a Mitsubishi Lancer Evo 5, which he then wrapped in the same livery as the 1998 Rally Australia car. You can even see his actual car on the language select screen for the PAL version of the game, again with the Winfield text edited. Interestingly, according to an interview with Edge magazine from 1999, the decals used on his Evo aren't simply a replica, but the actual ones used on the car that Mackinnon drove, which he bought from an auction on the Mitsubishi website. That's pretty cool, but to be honest, all of this makes the emission of this car from GT2 all the more perplexing. Another car cut from GT2 but still present in the files is the Volkswagen Polo. This unassuming hatchback is actually quite a unique model when it comes to cut Gran Turismo cars. The reason is because this car was seemingly cut very late into development. With these cut cars, if there is data of them left in the game, it will typically be incomplete. 
Whether it's the model of the car itself that's unfinished, or various aspects of how it is supposed to be included in the game. With the Polo, this is not the case. The car is completely finished, but simply not made accessible. As MattJ155 put it in his own video on the Polo, this is GT2's most complete cut car. Because not only is it fully functional when put back into the game, technically, it is still part of the final game despite being cut. Firstly, you can see the logo for the car appear in the opening movie, albeit very briefly, implying that by the time the decision to cut it was made, that part of the intro had already been created. But secondly, and more importantly, you can actually see the car itself in the final game. The Polo has opponent data for the Global Compact Car Cup event, but the car itself being made unusable means that it was flagged to never appear. However, if you enter into the event generator, there is a very small chance that you may actually come up against the Polo. This is because the event generator uses opponent data from the other events to fill its grid. So, what happens is that when the opponent data for the Polo is taken, the flag which is applied to the compact car event that stops it appearing there isn't considered, and so the car just loads as normal. To get the Polo to appear, it's recommended that you choose easy difficulty and use a lower performance car yourself. So again, this is sort of a cut car. It's technically present in the game, although not intentionally, yet cannot be used by the player without modifying the game. And to round off the trio of cut cars still hidden in GT2, we have probably the most famous one of them all. The Mercedes CLK race car. The CLK also seems to be a very late removal from this game, as it is mostly finished, but still not quite as complete as the Polo. This car is based on the 1999 concept version of the CLK DTM race car. The Japanese manual for GT2 even includes the Mercedes-Benz CLK DTM 2000 on its car list page, highlighting this similarity and how late it was actually cut from the game. Despite this, the car's specs and performance are based on the 1995 C-Class DTM, another car which was slated to be in GT2 but cut far earlier in development. Like the Polo, the CLK has opponent data still left in the game, so we can see that it was intended to appear at the Gran Turismo World League and Gran Turismo All-Star events. Sadly, the event generator doesn't feature race cars as opponents, so there's no way to trick the game into loading the car like with the Polo. Although the CLK didn't feature officially in GT2, the real-life 2000 season version of the car would appear in GT3, and be present in the series all the way through to GT6. Now, the final cut car I want to talk about from GT2 is easily the most elusive. It's the only one in this video which has no leftover data in any of the games. Some of the earliest images of GT2 date back to the start of 1999. And within these screenshots, we can find something very intriguing. That is a 1997 Mercedes CLK GTR. A car which, outside of these few pictures, would never be seen again. And to this very day, the car has never featured in any Gran Turismo game. Wait, what? Yes, you heard me. Now, to explain this, I think it's important that we cover something. So, the CLK GTR, CLK LM, and CLR. What is the difference between these three cars? I see people confusing them all the time, which is understandable given their appearance and very similar names. Well, the CLK GTR came first. After the International Touring Car Championship collapsed, Mercedes looked to take their factory program over to sports cars, and the newly formed FIA GT Championship seemed like the best place for them to be. They designed and built the CLK GTR to compete in the GT1 class for the 1997 season, and it was also used for part of the 1998 season before it was replaced with the CLK LM. As the name implies, the CLK LM was developed with Le Mans in mind, 
It featured revised bodywork, which was lower and sleeker, as well as replacing the V12 from the GTR with a V8, derived from their previous Sauber-built Group C prototypes. This car was raced throughout the rest of 1998, before McLaren and Porsche both pulled out of GT1, thus spelling the end of the category. For 1999, they decided to build an all-new car specifically to tackle the 24 Hours of Le Mans. This was the CLR, built to the new LMGTP regulations that made it noticeably lower than its predecessors. Its sole competitive outing at Le Mans in 1999 resulted in it going airborne on three separate occasions before the car was retired indefinitely. So that's just a brief explanation, but don't feel too bad if you didn't know any of that, because it turns out that Polyphony didn't either. After the disappointment with GT2, Gran Turismo 4 heralded the long-awaited appearance of the CLK GTR. Except it didn't, because this is the CLK LM with the wrong name on it. It was also incorrect in GT PSP, and initially in GT5, before finally being corrected in the 1.07 update to the CLK LM, which it was all along. From GT4 to GT6, it also had a massively inflated 800 horsepower, which was also then corrected in Gran Turismo 7. But even now in GT7, there still remains an error. The wheel design that has been used ever since GT4 was never fitted to the CLK LM, only the GTR. Ah, they'll get it right one day, I'm sure. Anyway, here's an easy way to tell the difference between the LM and the GTR. The LM, being the more streamlined version that competed at Le Mans, has a much smaller front intake and also no vents ahead of the front wheels, which the GTR has. And also, the CLR, the one that actually took flight, is much lower than the other two, kind of like they took a CLK LM and just stepped on it. It is never featured in Gran Turismo, and apart from in these early GT2 screenshots, neither has the CLK GTR. The GTR was also seen in a render that was rediscovered in that same February 1999 issue of Edge magazine. Here it can be seen minus the D2 logos on the side. So, why was the car cut so early despite appearing in a very complete state? Complete enough that it could even be shown in these screenshots. Well, it's never been officially confirmed, but it's strongly believed that EA held an exclusive license to the car owing to its inclusion in Need for Speed High Stakes, which was the only racing game at the time to include the CLK GTR in any form. That game did release only a month or so after these GT2 screenshots were first seen, so the timeline does stack up. But hey, this is 2024, and in the 25 years since the car was seen in GT2, people have come up with mods for this game in which they've painstakingly recreated the 3D model of the car from scratch. So if you really can't live without trying the CLK GTR in GT2, then worry no more. The Project A-Spec mod recently added the CLR as well, so if you're looking for a more interesting experience, then they've got you covered as well. The Mercedes has taken off. When it comes to the Gran Turismo game with the biggest number of unique cut cars that were actually seen, there can only be one winner. As the series' first entry on the PS2, GT3 had a lot of expectations. It was originally unveiled as Gran Turismo 2000, but as time went on, the game would become something very different from what was originally shown. GT3 has quite a few cars which are pretty much complete and yet were never used in the final game, but one of those is not the Lamborghini Nomad Diablo GT1. This car is fully present on the Japanese release of the game, however, due to licensing issues, would not be seen in the international releases. In fact, the only reason it appears in the Japanese version at all is due to the car being licensed through the Japan Lamborghini Owners Club, the team which owned and ran the real-life car in the JGTC, and is a completely separate entity from Lamborghini itself. Despite this loophole, it was not included in the game outside of Japan at the explicit request of Lamborghini. 
If you want to know more about the real-life car itself, then I actually made a video on it last year, highlighting its often forgotten story. But moving on to cars that were fully cut from this game, let's start with the Lancia Stratos. The Stratos had appeared in GT2 and was expected to return in GT3, given that it was seen in footage and screenshots as far back as the GT2000 days. And not only was there the Stratos road car, but also the rally car, again appearing completely finished, with the exception of its wheels which were just taken from the road car. It's unknown why they were cut, since Lancia is still represented in the final game by way of the Delta HF Integrale rally car. But it's a shame nonetheless, as having more older cars like these would have added some more variety to GT3's roster. The Stratos also has the distinction of being the only fully cut car from GT3 to be seen in any official material. But without a doubt, the most well-known cut car from GT3, and maybe even the entire series, is this, the Porsche 911 GT3. The story of this car in Gran Turismo is practically infamous, but here's a brief summary. Cass himself owned, and still does own, a white 996 generation 911 GT3, back when Gran Turismo 3 was being developed. Due to EA holding an exclusive license for the Porsche brand at the time, the car sadly couldn't be included in the final game, yet it was still fully modelled and just left unused. Fast forward to 2016, and EA's exclusivity deal with Porsche comes to an end, thus allowing the brand to feature in the series for the first time with GT Sport in 2017. Later, in 2018, the 996 GT3 is added in an update to the game, thus fulfilling the ambition which was laid out over 17 years prior with GT3. It's not known whether the car in GT3 was created just for fun, so Kaz could enjoy driving his own car in the game, or whether it was seriously intended to be fully included at some point, given the obvious roadblock in doing that. The only silver lining to this story is that GT3 included the Roof RGT, a sports car based on the 996 GT3 that looked very similar and so shared many similarities with it. In fact, this is most likely why the final time trial that you'll find in the arcade mode has you trying to beat Kaz's own time in a Roof RGT at Complex String. Had it been included, there's no doubt in my mind that this would have been in the 911 instead. So, each of these cars still existed, fully finished, but hidden within the files of GT3. If you have the NTSC version of the game, they can be modded back in, no problem. Unfortunately on PAL, their models have been removed, so trying to load them in will result in the body of a Daihatsu Kuore being used as a placeholder instead. Along with the absence of many of the original Formula 1 cars, the PAL version of GT3 is definitely inferior in this aspect. But alongside these finished cars, we also have to look at some cut cars that exist as just models without any proper specs. One that you might have seen before is the McLaren MP4-13. This was Mika Hakkinen's 1998 championship winning Formula 1 car that was seemingly made for testing purposes, as the side decal implies. I highly doubt that it was ever considered to be included in the full game, and the fact that it lacks a far LOD model, as well as the relative jankiness of the model it does have, implies that not a huge amount of time or effort was put into creating it. But the next entry, I think, is far more interesting. The Alfa Romeo 156 is a car featured in GT3, but at one point in time, it appears as though a touring car version of it was going to be included as well. The car in question is this, the Alfa Romeo 156, which competed in the 2000 European Super Touring Car Cup. The real-life car would win the title at the hands of Fabrizio Giovinardi, and the team which campaigned it, Nord Auto Engineering, would win the team's championship also. However, the car that was modelled was actually the number 7 machine which was driven by Romana Bernardoni, who finished 15th in the championship with a best result of 8th place. Interesting choice. It's a shame that this car didn't make the cut, since it would have been a solid low-end race car and a good counterpoint to the Citroen Zara F2, which was easily the best front-wheel drive car in GT3. 
Also, it would have been the perfect rival for the BMW 320i touring car which was later added in GT4, given that they both competed against each other in the ETCC. This was yet another car which was cut and then never reappeared in any future games. The only small spotlight it had was the real car appearing on the event banner for the Real Circuit Tours in GT4. Also, there was a teaser image for GT PSP, wherein many people mistook the presence of the regular 156 to be the touring car. Some thought that it had a yellow splitter, thus making it the touring car, but this is most likely just another yellow car being positioned underneath it, and the actual touring car didn't even have a yellow splitter. Not to mention the absence of the decals, which should be clearly visible from this angle. So, those are the most interesting cut cars from GT3. But whilst I've covered the most well-known and notable examples, there is one more car that I think is worth mentioning. This car isn't as exciting as the ones I've already talked about, but due to this fact, it seems to be the one that gets the most overlooked and forgotten. So, beyond the fully complete cars and the body-only cars, there is a third type of hidden car in GT3 that I've yet to mention. These are the sample cars. Sample cars were used for testing various things in GT3, and whilst they're clearly not quite suitable to be in the final game, they do have enough data programmed for them to be drivable. The bodies of these sample cars are typically just placeholders, like this RX-7 LM or Acura RSX. They're cars which featured in the final game, but their models are used here for testing purposes. But there is one exception. The cars labelled Sample 002, 004 and 009 all use the body of the TVR Cerberus Speed 6. Now, this might not be immediately apparent, but the Cerberus Speed 6 wasn't in GT3. It was previously in GT2, and in GT3 you'll find the Griffith, the Tuscan Speed 6, and even the Cerberus Speed 12. I can only assume that they simply ran out of time to include it. As you can see, the model isn't even complete, as it's missing rear lights. But even still, the decision to use this unfinished model of a car, which was seemingly planned to be in the game but never made it, simply for testing paint and a few other things, does strike me as unusual. The car would later be finished and made a return in GT4. What's noteworthy is that there is no reference to the name of this car anywhere in the files of GT3. In fact, the actual model doesn't even have any badges, so it's been identified as the Cerbera purely on its looks alone. And if I'm not mistaken, I do believe that is the only car on this list where that is the case. So who knows, maybe it isn't actually a Cerbera, but just a fictional car that happens to look almost identical. Well, this is the final entry on this list, and true to my word, I have a very interesting and kind of bizarre story for you all. In recent years, some footage has emerged that has confused those who've seen it. The footage in question comes from Best Motoring, a Japanese car show and magazine that became well known for their coverage of the latest cars, tuning shops, and motorsports. What the footage shows is Circuit de la Sarte in Gran Turismo 5 Prologue. This track wasn't normally accessible in GT5 Prologue, however, on special builds of the game, the GT4 version of the circuit was ported over. The track was also seen on another special build at the 2007 24 Hours of Le Mans, and so was the GT4 rendition of the Nordschleifer at the 2008 24 Hours of the Nürburgring. Both tracks can even be seen in a trailer for the Ferrari California in GT5 Prologue. But it's not the track that's the most interesting thing about this video, but rather the car that's supposedly being driven. As we can see from some text that appears at the end of the video, it is the Dome S102. This car was produced in 2008 to compete at Le Mans in the top LMP1 category. It raced at the Le Mans 24 hours on two occasions. Firstly in 2008, where it finished 13th in class and last of the classified finishers, and again in 2012 as the updated S102.5. 
but it was not classified. And before anyone comments, no, it isn't actually pronounced Domei as you might expect being a Japanese company. It is just Dome, or Domu if you want to be super pedantic. But the main issue with this footage is that the car itself is never physically seen in the game since only the bumper camera is used. Meaning that this one piece of text is the only evidence we have to suggest that the car was ever in the game. Now, this didn't sit right with me, so I did a bit of digging. One thing that bugged me whilst I was researching was that whenever I found some notes or reference about the Dome S102 being in Gran Turismo, they would always link back to this video. It's a 4 minute segment uploaded on the GT Planet Archives YouTube channel from 2019, at a very low quality and with some weird visual distortion in places. Normally I wouldn't really mention this, if it's the only publicly available footage there is, then so be it. But what I couldn't shake was the fact that I had already seen the full video before. So, after a quick look, I was able to find the original 2008 segment uploaded to the Best Motoring YouTube channel. The video itself is 16 and a half minutes long and provides a lot more context, especially about the Dome S102 itself. Unfortunately, there are no subtitles, but here's the gist of it. Two of the drivers of the real car at Le Mans in 2008, Tatsuya Kataoka and Daisuke Ito, are invited to Polyphony's HQ to get some practice in the game before taking on the real Le Mans 24 hours. Keiichi Suchia, as one of the hosts of Best Motoring, is there as well, and there's even a short interview with Kazunori himself. I'll link the full video in the description. It seemed like someone just slapped a GT Sport on the thumbnail, since that was the current game when the video was uploaded, but the footage itself dates back to 2008. Unfortunately, despite having the original video, this still doesn't provide us with any more clues. We're still stuck with the bumper cam and that single instance of the car's name appearing on screen. Maybe if someone can translate what's being said, that could provide more information, but I don't really think that anything groundbreaking is said here. But fascinatingly, the most interesting piece of evidence doesn't come from this video, GT5 Prologue, or the full GT5 either. It's actually in GT PSP. Within the unused files in that game, there is leftover text specifically naming the Dome S102. So this does at least prove that they weren't just making it up for the show. The Dome S102 was planned to be in Gran Turismo at some point. I should mention that this doesn't confirm that the car was planned for GT PSP though, since its text entry exists alongside various other cars from the PS3 games which clearly weren't planned to be in GT PSP, like the tuned cars from GTHD Concept or the 2009 stock cars that I mentioned earlier. So, although we never saw it, did the Dome S102 actually exist in any of these games? After everything I've seen and everything I've read, I personally believe that no, it didn't. Now, there's a few reasons why I think this way. The most obvious one being that, of course, we never saw it. And if you're making a show where the whole point is that these real racing drivers are driving their race car in the game, why would you deliberately avoid showing the car? Maybe you could argue that it was still being worked on and Polyphony didn't want to show it in an unfinished state. But if that's the case, then how come there's no leftover data of it anywhere in GT5 Prologue? Like I said, the name only mention is in GT PSP. But really, I think the most damning evidence is when it comes to the time frame involved. The real-life Dome S102 was unveiled on the 21st of March 2008. The video where Kataoka and Ito supposedly drove it in the game was filmed just two months after that. There is no chance that the car was created in the game in such a short period without Polyphony collaborating directly with Dome whilst it was being designed, and there's no evidence to suggest that happened. So I think that's a pretty solid explanation as to why I don't think the car being driven here was actually the S102. But that then begs the question of, what really was it? 
If I had to guess, my best assumption is that what they were actually driving was another Le Mans prototype that was already in Gran Turismo, but with its specs and physics data modified to bring it in line with the real S102. At one point in the video, you can even clearly hear the in-game engine sound. If you have any idea which car this might be, then I'd love to hear your suggestions in the comments. For now, I feel very confident in saying that the Dome S102 is just Gran Turismo vaporware. Well, that's everything. Those were some of the most interesting and obscure cut cars from Gran Turismo history. I have to say a massive thank you to the folks over at the cutting room floor for documenting so much of this stuff. Without their website as a resource, this video would have been far more difficult to make. I also have to give a shout out to MattJ155. Matt is the OG when it comes to exploring secrets and hidden things in these games, and a few of the cars I've talked about in this video, he's covered in far more depth on his channel, so make sure to go and check him out. Of course, there are far more cars that have been cut from these games than just the ones I've mentioned here. I deliberately focused on unique cars, not variations of existing cars, and cars where there is actually some physical evidence of them being in the game at one point. If I were to talk about cars that were rumoured or mentioned only in text, then frankly we would be here all day. But maybe I'll make a video covering the most intriguing examples of those if people are interested. As always, let me know what you think in the comments. Which of these cars do you wish appeared in their respective game the most? But for now, thanks for watching, and have a good one.